But the government of India can come up with any other alternative solution also, except for the separate statehood. So would you be accepting any sort of solution which looks so fair and satisfying and satisfactory in the eyes of the Eastern people? See, it's too early to say anything in that matter because okay, okay. you're open anyway. They, they Hello everyone, joining me is K. Asangba Sangtam and he is the convener for the talk team under ENBO for the Eastern Nagaland statehood demand. So um, he has been very instrumental in uh, bringing all these demands to the forefront and addressing this to the state government as well as to the government of India. So it's an opportunity for us to have this conversation. It's been long due and he has been instrumental in bringing the telecom telecommunication even here in Northeast and he is the person behind the setting up of donor ministry when he was the standing committee lead for the communication as well as when he was the MP in the Lok Sabha representing the state of Nagaland in 1998 until 2004. So thank you so much for giving us this time to have this interaction with you sir. Nice to have brought me to this interview. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And you know very well that the ENPO's demand on separate statehood demand has been going on for quite a long time. Yes. And it seems to have gained some, gained some momentum mm -hmm. this time very recently as the election is approaching. Mm -hmm. So can you take me through the short journey of and the history of how this statehood came into being, statehood demand came into being? Well, to begin with, uh, the Eastern Nagaland area, which was earlier called the uh, unadministered, unconquered by the mm -hmm. British, mm -hmm. and uh, also it has a term as uh, uh, unoccupied. You see, many people in Delhi they get a little confused when the Nagas are there. How some people should be uh, part of Assam, or some are outside. Actually, the Naga Hills district mm -hmm. had uh, come into being in the British Empire since 1866 that is the advanced tribes. Mm -hmm. Then the seven tribes, which is uh, mostly of uh, uh, Changs, Konyaks, Pom, Sangtam, mm -hmm. Imkyung, Tekir, Kamyunga. All these seven tribes were outside the British uh, control. And uh, because, because of the difficult terrain, and accessibility, uh, the no, no road communication, mm -hmm. and they were warlike uh, <coughs> tribes. They were uh, headhunters, mm -hmm. and of course, all Nagas are termed as headhunters, yes. but they were very fero ferocious. British made two, three attempts, but they could not uh, succeed, okay. so they left out. Okay. So they concentrated the Naga Hills districts, district, mm -hmm. and uh, later on, uh, when the British left, in, uh, after uh, India's independence, uh, Naga Hills district became a district under Assam uh, state. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then in, after the independence, 19, uh, in 1948, February, the unadministered, unconquered, and, uh, you know, uh, um, which was excluded, who came as a part of Northeast Frontier Agency, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, looked after by the Ministry of External Affairs. Okay. And this particular area, the Eastern Nagal, present Eastern Nagaland region, uh, formed into a division known as Twinsang Frontier Division. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started its uh, administration. Uh, governor was there, Governor Assam, and the, uh, the, the chief administrator was the advisor who would be taking orders from Delhi to the Ministry of External Affairs. Okay. And then in 1957, when the moderate people from uh, Naga Hills wanted to uh, demand for a statehood. They also uh, informed the government of India mm -hmm. that people who are living in this particular region mm -hmm. have similar customs and you know, uh, tradition. Okay. Uh, so they could also be brought in. So they approached some of our uh, ancestors to be a part of that. And since the, they thought that the, they were not exposed to the outside world, mm -hmm. It will be better that they get the exposure, also they get 
uh, with a new independent India, mm -hmm. they will get uh, equal uh, share of uh, development. Yeah, yeah. But then in the process of forming the state in 1963, mm. we were, uh, the Eastern Nagaland people were given only six MLAs. And since people of that area, uh, this Eastern Nagaland were not uh, exposed to outside world, yes. they were given an institution known as Regional Council with 35 members as a uh, to uh, um, interact with each other okay. for uh, uh, bringing out legislatures. Mm -hmm. And then in the Constitution of India, Article 371A, um, Clause 2B, it is mentioned clearly that money which would be sent by central government yeah. would be equally divided between the uh, the uh, uh, Dwensang district Dwensang Hills. Mm -hmm. and the uh, Nagar okay. Hills district. Okay. But this did not happen because oh, yes. governor j just didn't uh, bother about it. Okay. And then whatever m money came to Kohima, mm -hmm. they were all absorbed mostly in this uh, uh, Nagar Hills district area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence, even today, we do not have uh, proper road communication. Mm -hmm. Those small uh, school uh, uh, schools and um, um, uh, health mm -hmm. cares which were set up during mm -hmm. NIFA, they still remain the same. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they're in the verge of collapse also. Okay. And many people who needed uh, proper attention in medical care, they have to go to far flung places to till today. Mm -hmm. And those people who doesn't have, they have to just die there. Mm. So that sort of situation created. And our MLAs were not able to take part because they were outnumbered by the other MLAs. Okay, you we, have 20 MLAs from Eastern Side. No, right? that is later on. Later on, okay. See, in 1963, <coughs> six MLAs were given to Eastern Nagaland. Okay. At that time, we had almost 50 50 population. Mm -hmm. That means Dwensang District and Mokokchung and Kohima uh, combined. Okay. We had almost uh, 48 to 52 okay. percent. Okay. Where we could have even 38 to uh, 40 MLAs, we were only given 6 MLAs. Then people uh, rose up and said that it's not fair. Uh, we should have more representatives. So uh, they had increased the uh, seat from 12 to uh, 6 to 12. And uh, by the end of the special provision, which extended from 1963 to 73, mm -hmm. the, uh, there was an increase of another 8 more, making the number of representative for Eastern Nagaland mm. to 20 seats. Right. But at that time also, even if they had to give equal number of representatives, because at that time, regional council was there, at least some members who could express something yes. that within their own. Mm -hmm. And mind you, in Article 371A, Clause the 2C, mm -hmm. that means no act of uh, Nagaland Assembly could be imposed upon the Dwensang district okay, okay. without the... Um, uh, the concentration of the regional council. So Tensang district had, re had refers to all Eastern Nagaland. Eastern area. Nagaland, yes. Okay, okay. So they had 35 um, uh, regional council members. Mm -hmm. Now, having put that uh, 2040, mm. the state started marching on to the uh, path of uh, development, mm -hmm. but our people were outnumbered. And many a times, some of the tribes have got only safe seat only for one. Mm -hmm. For instance, among the Changs, it is only Noxen uh, As assembly constituency. Yeah. And for Sangtams, it's Ulungkim Chari. Only that one? Yes. Wow. And for Imkyungs, it's only Shamator. But out of 20 seats, then who took away the multiple seats? Which tribe took away the multiple seats? Well, uh, the Aus. Aus, okay. If, the, regarding the, uh, the, the, uh, f uh, the advanced people, is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, ours have got, I think, about 10 seats. They have, I think. And then are, they yeah. can also contest from Timapur. The next will be the Semas, mm -hmm. then the Angabis, mm -hmm. then the Lothas, okay. and so on. Then what's the rationale of now ENBO's demand for a separate statehood? Do you think separate statehood would uh, resolve all these issues of representation and development deficit? Yeah, I do believe in that because. <clears throat> Right now, the representatives who are sent from Eastern Nagaland, mm -hmm. we do not have uh, that matching uh, number. Yeah. Then on top of that, uh, the situation today, all the money which is coming to uh, Kohima is user. Because right, right now, if you look at the financial discipline, <coughs> we have got so many projects 
either half done or 30 percent mm -hmm. done, 40 mm -hmm. percent done. Mm -hmm. The entire money has been exhausted. Mm -hmm. And over and above that, we ha have learned from the parliament mm -hmm. that um, uh, the finance minister of India, uh, Mrs. Sidharaman, made a statement that Nagaland has borrowed more than 15,000 crores wow. and the uh, union government is the calendar. Now, should the Nagaland government not been able to pay back to the World Bank or Asian Bank, mm. wherever the borrowing has been done, mm. that, that means government of India has to do the... Yes, whatever, as a guarantor. Yes. So this has become a very serious mm -hmm. uh, aspect. Mm. And today, there are projects like High Court. Mm. Then we have two glaring examples of a multi-purpose stadium yeah. in Dimapur, right. one in Surima. Right. They are, the money has been exhausted. Mm. And uh, it's looked like an ancient Roman, you know, <laughs> uh, stadiums, yes, which yes. Uh, is very shocking. Mm -hmm. And then you see other medical colleges, which started way back about eight, nine, ten years ago. Okay. They are even fifty percent complete, uh, only fifty percent completed. Mm -hmm. And then they even said that electrification is also done. Mm -hmm. And then even the uh, what you call this uh, water supply has been already connected. Mm -hmm. okay. So things like that. Yeah. If that is a situation mm. at this juncture where Eastern Nagaland stands today mm. with no communication, proper communication, mm -hmm. no medical care, no school, no colleges, no any central institution whatsoever. And people who come to from Delhi, they are hijacked in Dimapur, shown a good uh, program in Gohima, they go back. Mm -hmm. true, so I true. think in this kind of a situation, mm -hmm. in another 30, 40 years, we don't find any development taking place. Accessibility yeah. is comparatively very less in the eastern side. Absolutely. So my question would be, what if the government of India offers a fairness in the redrawing of the delimitation mm -hmm. and you have a more or less a fair proportionate to the population, fair representation of the people mm -hmm. in the Nagaland State Assembly? Mm -hmm. Would that come as a... Um, alternative to the demand of your statehood of Eastern Nagaland? See, right now, even if that uh, sort of arrangement is made, yeah. I don't find any uh, tangible development coming because, you see, we already have 15,000 crores mm -hmm. right in our face, mm -hmm. that loan which has been taken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then on that, the salaries of some of the government servants are not paid regularly also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On top of that, ongoing projects, mm -hmm. Now, Controller uh, uh, Auditor General's report mm. is submitted every budget session mm. in Nagaland State. Yeah. Estimate committee is not able to indulge in the discussion or debate. Mm. Simply, this uh, put under the uh, swept under the carpet. Mm -hmm. And if that accumulation from 2004 till today, you can imagine what is the uh, the gravity of the situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In that kind of a situation, mm -hmm. I don't find any, even if a re equal representative got another f 40 seats, so Eastern Nagaland is given. Yeah. Until <laughs> and unless this uh, free hand is given to uh, Eastern Nagaland, mm -hmm. I don't think uh, th there's any possibility. Okay, so your only solution that you envision is a separate statehood. That will solve most of the problem as you envision. Yes, it that is the only way. Okay, so you are adamant about it, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. I mean, it's not mine, uh, I'm adamant. Yeah. The grassroots people, you see, like, 2000... I mean, you as a representative. Yeah, mm. This um, movement started in uh, 1999. Yeah. And uh, 2004, mm -hmm. the ENPO, earlier it was called uh, Tuen Sang Mon uh, People's Organization. But when the districts were created, like Long Leng and Kifi, mm. so they changed the nomenclature into East Nagaland People's Organization. Okay. And uh, the gravity started building up. And then in the 2010, um, 25th November, okay. a memorandum was submitted to the Prime Minister of India mm -hmm. to uh, demand for a statehood. Mm -hmm. And that is not from ENPO side. ENPO is the uh, pressure group yeah, yeah. built from the grassroots. Mm. You see, these uh, village councils, they had their own meetings in their own uh, jurisdiction. And they uh, passed a resolution mm. that a committee or a group would be formed as an organization mm. consisting of the seven tribes with uh, go and demand for a statehood. Okay, okay. So that's how the thing has come up. Okay. But you must be aware that many of the leaders as well as some of the guests that I have talked to mm -hmm. 
they have an opinion that why ENBO people want to further divide the, Nagas, the Nagaland and the Nagas. Having one Nagaland state is um, more than enough. Why do we have to further divide? If there, is, if there have any issue that should be settled within the state of Nagaland and whatever arrangement can be done should be done, but not at the cost of dividing Nagaland into two states. Now, let's just put it that way. Mm. Uh, emotionally, we're all Nagas, yeah. right? <clears throat> but emotionally, how many forward Nagas mm. are thinking about the plight of the people? They're reeling under poverty. Mm -hmm. People from Eastern Nagaland are going to Mokokchong, Kohima, Dimapur, mm. as, not as a, a service seeker for two score meals. Mm -hmm. The parents are not able to sustain them. Mm -hmm. They are not able to give them a proper education mm -hmm. because the teachers don't turn up. Yeah. They don't, there's no classes. And then even there's a class also, they don't have proper shed. Mm. The rains fall into their classrooms. Mm -hmm. And then many of them are helpless. So thinking that some opening will be there, so mm. they send their children, mm. the minor children, mm. to Mokokchong, Kohima and Dimapur, mm. that they get at least a two square meals and maybe if the owner is kind enough, they could send them some... Uh, you know, primary school and all that. Mm -hmm. But many of them has landed up now in the recent past uh, where human abuse has started, beating up, tying up their legs, and uh, it's in the public okay. domain now. Okay. So, and it's quite a challenging, um, you are in a very quite a challenging position because the demand is, in, in the eyes of many people, it looks like it's far-fetched demand. Mm -hmm. At the same time, even if, if, you don't get this demand also, it's going to be a big problem for the Eastern Nagaland. Mm. So, your only strategy as of now is boycotting the election until this demand is met. Mm -hmm. So, is that strategy still on, on your plate? See, before we, the ENPO took this decision, they have taken several rounds of uh, consultative meeting yeah. with the uh, NNPG, uh, Eastern Nagaland uh, national workers, okay. NSC and I am uh, national workers, okay. the central executive, uh, and then the women and uh, Eastern Nagaland Students Federation, mm -hmm. then various other uh, uh, frontal organization to take a feedback from them. Achha. And then the, the lastly, we had a meeting with our uh, legislators, mm. 20 of them. Mm including the Raja Sabha member. Okay. And they all express that worst come to worst, this will be the only way to uh, get things. Because the talk started with a proper earnest. Mm -hmm. After giving a proper picture mm -hmm. from the Prime Minister level, Home Minister level, and then we, they said that we should start with the bilateral. Mm -hmm. We had four bilateral talks. Okay. Then we had two uh, tripartite talks <coughs> with the government of uh, Nagaland officials. Mm -hmm authorized by the government, yeah. the officials who are representing the state. And uh, only two, three things we had a little bit of differences, like the um, uh, uh, income, whatever the uh, per capita income was there, mm -hmm. and then uh, employment, mm -hmm. which we took a challenge mm -hmm. with the Ministry of Home Affairs to give exact figure. So it comes to uh, 8.47, mm -hmm. and the rest is the, that is the Eastern Nagaland, uh, which is employed by the state government, and the rest was the advanced uh, people who are employed in the state government. Okay. And then uh, finally we were called by the Home Secretary, and then they also, he also gave an explanation that after having talked with the uh, East ENPO delegation, mm -hmm and uh, tripartite with the uh, state government officials. Mm -hmm. and they have sent out 10 joint secretary levels to all the Eastern Nagaland region. Okay. And 10 days they have visited. Mm -hmm. You can say fact-finding committee. Okay. Okay. And they came back with whatever uh, we had spelled out, mm -hmm. the dis uh, discrepancy and uh, shortcomings. They established, they established the facts and brought to the Home Secretary and said that whatever has been said is on the ground. Okay. Uh, same thing is there. Okay. So but, he said that now, mm -hmm. from the official level, we finish our observation. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to the political level. Yeah. Uh, Home Minister will give a call. Okay. That's it. Okay. But in case of not giving this demand by the government of Nag government of India, mm -hmm. 
and let's say election is not held. It, we have seen in our past experiences that boycotting of election it's, it's not, um, doesn't go without having a bad consequence. Mm -hmm. It has a devastating, devastating consequence on the people, mm -hmm. especially on the common citizens. Because when we boycott elections, we have had in the past experience at Nagas boycotting election, mm -hmm. we have seen that um, government of India tends to you know, impose the president's rule, which leads to suspension of our democratic rights and being di dictated by the president directly. So in case of not meeting this demand and boycotting the election at the same time, mm -hmm. don't you think it will have a bad and negative repercussions on the lives of the people of the Eastern Nagaland? Because you will not have any representative for the coming, upcoming five years. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, we are optimistic. Okay. In the sense that government of India is fully aware of our deficiency. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eastern Nagaland is located in most strategic you know, place. Yeah. China on the top, Burma on the uh, eastern side. Yeah. Today, the periphery of India-Burma border mm. across that side, on the other side, the Chinese have already taken possession of many mines and important places. Yeah, and today, the Chinese are taking the lead in business. True. Now, if the government of India has, cannot just take it lying down, mm -hmm. that Eastern Nagaland should be left like this. Mm -hmm. But I think they are fully aware of it. I have not given up to hope. They have definitely a positive attitude also. Mm -hmm. the, the, the question that they put, mm -hmm. it's the only last resort, but we can still work it out. Mm -hmm. you see, government of India, if they have come out with a certain uh, you know, fact, uh, features, mm -hmm. which could uh, immediately you know, bring up some relief, mm -hmm. That I think there's a way out. Otherwise, uh, whatever has been uh, uh, resolved for not participating in it, that that is put there because do you want to hasten things up yeah. in such a manner that uh, uh, because these uh, elections are coming, <coughs> then uh, that casualness should not be there on both sides. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Mm. So if the government of India uh, comes up with certain formula, mm and where we should benefit the people there. Mm -hmm. I think there's a way out. And okay. I don't think we are that stringent. Okay. Last time also when a boycott was called, okay. we were uh, the first to say we will uh, participate in the election. Mm -hmm. Because one letter which we needed, yeah. they came in the last moment. Okay. That they gave it. So in case of government... We are not here to oh. rub nose or shoulder <laughs> as the okay. government of India, no. Right. But the government of India can come up with any other alternative solution also, except for the separate statehood. So would you be accepting any sort of solution which looks so fair and satisfying and satisfactory in the eyes of the Eastern people? See, it's too early to say anything on that matter because okay, okay. you're open anyway. The, 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 uh, the fact of the matter is our uh, people, because of this, uh, you know, gap, so much gap in development mm -hmm. and people are reeling under poverty today. Yeah, yeah. And nothing is happening. That's the, that's the fact. I think other Naga should, in fact, come forward mm. and uh, plead for us. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to buy off people and trying, trying to make a, yeah. a, a confrontation sort of situation. Mm -hmm. We are not after uh, separating from our Nagas. Mm -hmm. We are very much a Naga. Mm -hmm. We are more indigenous Naga than anyone else. <laughs> in fact, today, if you put any performance, it's the ENPO who really comes and uh, makes the uh, tradition and uh, you know, dancing yeah, and... Yeah. Uh, performance much colorful than anyone else and uh, we are very proud of that. Mm -hmm. They're the guardian of Naga culture now. <clears throat> I wouldn't say mm -hmm. culture but I mean, we what? can add more flavor, okay. uh, you know, I know make that's, it more colorful. That's true. That's it. Yeah, which it's, is, uh, and it's still more closer to the originality of Naga indigenity. Yes. Yeah. I, I See, agree with that. <laughs> mm, yeah. The headhunting only left that area <laughs> Only in the early 70s. Okay, okay. It's not that we should bring it in. Okay, that right. you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. They actually, <laughs> the head hunting, possession of heads in the houses as a trophy okay. was very much there mm. in uh, life. True, because true. of Christianity, true. the government of India came about, then the uh, administration started uh, educating the people and all that. that the things have gone now true. to that. So what would be the next resort of action in it for fulfilling this demand, just proclaiming that you will boycott elections. May no, not no, you see, 
the ENPO doesn't take its own uh, decision by itself. Okay. It's a grassroots movement. Yeah. It's a referendum of 100%. Right. Now, today, many people about talk about um, what do you call that um, plebiscite of 99.99. Mm -hmm. Ours is 100%. Yeah. Okay. That uh, the ANPO should demand for a statehood. Okay. Now, even if the government of India puts a forward, it will be again referred back to the people. Mm -hmm. It's if the movement is started from the grassroots. Right, right. It has to go back. Right. Then we can explain what are the possibility, what are the thing that in the modern world. There's a platform which we can discuss it out mm. and found out because our ours is not that we want to be separate from Nagaland. Mm -hmm. We want to be uh, not Nagas. We didn't say that. Yeah, yeah. We are very much a Naga. That's totally understood. But our kitchen is empty. True. We don't have uh, proper food to cook in the house. Okay. Huh? Look at other places. Mm. They got enough sufficient and lavish <coughs> luxury. We are not thinking about luxury in True. Eastern Nagaland. Mm -hmm. Two square meal. With proper attention and our communication, young people should develop their skill. Mm. Huh? They come up with their own business. Mm -hmm. We have got three uh, trade centers. Mm -hmm. Last time when I was a member of parliament, I visited those places. Okay. They, they turned into a pig style, cow shed. Mm -hmm. It is to be humming with business, I think, trade, commerce. Yes, the disparity is quite visible for everyone. Yes. It's just that people don't want to accept that fact. Mm. But do you have the support of the 20 MLAs from the Eastern Nagaland on this? this See, MLAs, they are elected for five years. Yeah. The NPO formation is from the grassroots. Yeah. So if they have to go back after five years, mm. they have to be under the umbrella of ENPO. Yeah, yeah. So ENPO, whatever they are carrying out, they are consultations on grassroots. Okay. So they are there for, if they have performed well, they'll come back again. Mm. If they don't perform, they'll go back. So during that period of time, mm. if any decision taken by ENPO, they come under that umbrella. Okay. They're a, a, a frontier organization mm -hmm. for that matter. Okay. So uh, the, it'll be the other way around. Mm -hmm. They have to go back to their own respective constituency, okay. to the people for vote. So what the people wants, they have to also listen to that. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Mm. And they have also given out okay. that we go by the NPO resolution. Mm. Uh, their own uh, organization, this uh, unit uh, in law. Mm -hmm. Secretary said, we go by that. Okay. So I think there's no change in their attitude. Okay. I think you have a long way to go in order to materialize this demand. So let's see what uh, the future holds for the ENBO demand and wish you all the best for this. Well, thank you so yeah. much mm -hmm. because it's very little known, yeah. but I think uh, the fact should be made known to in the public domain. Very much. And that's why I think uh, I, whatever little that I have given out mm -hmm. should be observed from a better side, mm -hmm. not that the confrontational attitude. No. True, true. Either with the government of India, that's the last thing we will do. Okay. With the uh, present uh, administration also, that's the last thing. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that our people are suffering. Mm 